Hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good morning if you're in the United States. Good afternoon if you're in Europe. And good evening if you are Cameron in Australia. I just tried to do an Australian accent. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. myself. Oh, dear. Uh, it's This Week in WordPress. Pleasure to have you back. We've uh, we've been having a, a, a week off. I went on holiday. I went to Wales, and it was really hot, and swam in the sea, and it was really hot, and it was all lovely. And now I'm back, and I'm ready to talk about WordPress again. And I'm joined by three fabulous guests. First of all, uh, down there, we've got uh, Jess Frick from Pressable. How are you doing, Jess? I'm great, Nathan. I'm so glad you're back. Oh, thank you. I'm. I'm. Well, <laughs> I don't know what's the correct way. I was going to gonna say, that. like, when you go on vacation, I'm glad I'm back, but not really. When you go on vacation, do you? Does your mind just flood with interesting things to do? Because mine really does. I guess I just put the brakes on to like the normal thought processes. And I just kind of fill up with ideas and then I come back home and they immediately get drained away and come to naught. I think it comes down to the, is it a trip or is it a vacation? Okay. Yeah. You know, um, mm, trips, yeah, this... not so much. Vacations, absolutely. Vacation it was. And uh, all the good ideas have gone. Anyway, th th this is Jess Jessica Frick. Uh, she's the Director of Operations for Pressable. We'll be talking more about them uh, later. She's an iced tea connoisseur and a proud member of the Post Status community. So welcome back, one of our co-hosts. She's here all the time. Cameron Jones is making another return. He's been on here several times, one of, one of which was slightly less successful than the others because all the all the equipment broke down. But he's, he's here today. He's actually going to be featuring on the show later because he's written a really thought-provoking provo article. How are you doing, Cameron? Oh, I'm a little sleepy. Considering yes. it's uh, late in the evening. Yes. <laughs> How late in the evening? It's 10.30. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's late. Not too bad. Yeah. I'm not able to talk at 10.30 in the evening. I'll be tucked away in bed at that time. So thank you for joining us. Cameron Jones is a professional WordPress developer uh, from the little beach town of Victor Harbour, which is in Australia, as we've just said. He's the founder of the premium plugin store, Mongoose Marketplace, best known for Mongoose Page Plugin, which is used by more than 30,000 WordPress, web WordPress websites. He's also the maintainer of the official WordPress plugin for the free donation platform Kofi. Cameron also has contributed patches to several popular plugins such as ACF and Jetpack, as well as having spent nearly a decade building sites with and products for WordPress. He's also spent time as a Word as a Meetup and WordCamp organizer and also contributed to Core. But when he's away from the laptop, you can find Cameron on the sports field at a dance class or in the mosh pit at a heavy metal concert. I got to ask cuz some of those some of those seem like interesting combinations. Tell me first about the sport. What's the sport or sports? Um usually it's um cricket during the summer and Aussie rules football during the winter and I've also been playing baseball this winter, so Ooh. that's been fun. Yeah, and the dancing Final coming up in two weeks. So. Oh, oh, good luck, good luck. And what about the dancing? What kind of moves are you into? Uh, I do line dancing. You know, country ah, boots scooting. That's <laughs> such yeah. an interesting combination. Yeah, have, uh, Jess and uh, Christian, have you ever seen Aussie rules football? No. Uh, in the UK, in the UK, we, part of the world. No, no. In the UK, we call it Aussie no rules football. Because uh, it's the most mental sport you've ever seen. It's honestly like as soon as you, if you watch it for the first time, I guarantee. Be, what? What's? Why did he? How can they do? Like they can kick it, they can throw it, they can chuck it. It's just such the most amazing sport, and it's on a pitch the size of a cricket field, so it's massive. And the so, judges. Hold go, on, hold on. Just want to make sure I get this right. So this is this is soccer, right? This is, you call soccer? You're no. Oh, okay. No. So no. it's something like rugby? Yes, a bit mm. on a cricket pitch. Okay. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. It's well worth watching. But um, it's line dancing. It's probably closest to uh, Gaelic football is probably the yeah. closest sport to it. Yeah. That's you know not it. But uh, yeah, yeah. You, you mash a bunch of sports together and you get Aussie rules. Yeah, the only thing it doesn't have, I think, is like darts. If it had darts in it, it'd be truly interesting, well, I think. I'll, I'll kind of do, because if you get it through the, the different goalposts, you get different yeah. scores. So. Yeah, that's, 
That's but anyway, well worth watching. Aussie rules football. Sorry, for, I, I'm not mocking. I genuinely remember the first time I saw it, thinking, "What is what?" And then getting really into it. It was on. It was on the BBC. No, Channel Four. Our Channel Four for for years when I was a kid. And then it had a real cult following. And I them. Uh, yeah, and it really hasn't reached its positive goal, honestly. Like we've got soccer, we've got rugby, which is really violent, especially back in Romania. It's really, really <laughs> violent. <laughs> Extremely violent, I'd say. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we, I, I, I think we don't watch a lot of international sports, like maybe these, uh, you know, seems like a very localized type of sport. It, it's yeah. very popular, maybe in Australia, right? Yeah. Um, I guess we yeah. just don't watch those, you know. Well, you're hearing the voice of Christian Raber, who uh, who is joining us this week. He's been on before, but Christian is the owner at WP Chill, which you can see next to his name. Uh, he's a blogger occasionally at christianr.io, and he's been working with WordPress for over 10 years and has built or acquired a collection of plugins that are being used on over half a million active websites, all, made, all managed by a remote team. He loves talking about anything business, WordPress, investments, and product management any time of the day. Uh, Christian's best-known plugins are Modular Image Gallery, Strong Testimonials, and lastly, Download Monitor. How are you doing, Christian? You all right? Yeah, absolutely. I just can't wait to get to this part where we have to wave our hands. Like that's my. Favorite. Oh, this is the best bit. This, we can... Yeah, this is this is like this is We've like the it. only reason totally why. Totally done I'm it. Doing... Yeah, no, we have to keep doing it. Like, <laughs> could you imagine a show where you know you have uh, something that shows up like a red light and everyone has to go crazy like this while you're talking, you know, right? And you have to focus on doing this with your hands. We're also talking. I don't. I don't even know how that whole thing started. I think we accidentally did it one time, and then it just became kind of like the thing, and it's now the thing that we do. Oh, so we this um, was as an accident. I thought. We'll, this was Yes, more or less, as most good things are. We're going to talk about WordPress at some point, but just before we do, a uh, few things to say. First of all, if you are joining us, uh, firstly, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. If you'd like to share this stream, uh, I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, it's nice to have a, an audience, especially if they come into the comments and give some comments. WPBuilds.com forward slash live is the best place to do that. That is a YouTube embed. And because of that, you need to be logged into YouTube if you want to make comments. The other option is to go to our Facebook group or Facebook page. And if you want to be de-anonymized, Facebook require you to go to the following URL, chat.restream.io forward slash FB. And then you can click a button, which then allows us to see your avatar and name. Otherwise, you just come through as an anonymous user, which is fine if you want to do it that way, just like Jess just did. Was that on purpose or was that an accident? You just avatared yourself at the exact moment I was avataring. <laughs> it was so perfect, wasn't it? Yeah, that was good. That was like almost like we planned it. Uh, oh goodness, there's quite a few comments. Let's get let's get through a few of these because it's nice to say hello to people, isn't it? Hello, Rob Cairns, joining us once more. Thank you, uh, Rob. Really appreciate it. Uh, Medium WordPress Mafia. I don't know what you mean. Um, but thank you for joining us, Madeline. That's really nice. We've got a Facebook user here. This is what it looks like if you don't click the link. Um, you just go come through as Facebook user. But whoever you are, uh, we're glad to have you. Peter Ingersoll joining us once again. Good morning from Connecticut, he says. And Peter Neri. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Billy from Billy No Mates working on the 15th of August when nobody works in Europe. What? Why? Why does nobody work in Europe on that day, Peach? I genuinely don't know. That's not me being ignorant. I have no idea. Is it it's like something actually of... a huge holiday right now, which huh. is um, Saint Mary, and okay. it's both for Orthodox and Catholics as well. Right. So. Okay. 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 I guess Henry VIII got rid of all that back in the Middle Ages for us, and now we're uh, we, we don't have a clue about that particular holiday. But da -da 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 -da. okay, this person is going to go on YouTube, and then it's just a bunch of people saying hello to each other. There you go. You're right, Christian, because it's a Virgin Mary related saint thing. <laughs> Beautifully yeah, described. Yeah. We'll go with that. Uh, right. We're going to talk about WordPress. But before we do, I'll just share my screen. This is us, WP Builds website. If you fancy uh, subscribing to the stuff that we do, there's a button here. It's labeled subscribe rather cryptically. And if you click on that, you'll get to a page with all sorts of options to fill out forms and get on our mailing list and so on. So Feel free to do that. We'd really appreciate it. That'd be nice. But let's start. <laughs> uh, do you know what we need? What we need, apart from the hand waving, we need. I need a little jingle that I can play when there's oh, yeah. a WP drama piece, right? 
when it's the weekly WP drama, I need some sort of like, or a cowbell or something like that. Just no, something I, that I can strike. <laughs> I know what you need, actually. It's the badum sound. A what? You, you don't know that sound. It's pretty popular. No. It was certain. Yeah, it was a meme at some point. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like, like the of... sound uh, you, you, it makes when you hit the drums, right? It's like, a drum. Yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, this platform doesn't have that capability, but I kind of feel next time, like, I don't know, or I wear a Viking hat or something like that during the. the di- <laughs> no way, Jess. Jess has just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> as, if, as if that happens Jess has got a bucket right okay so the theme of today's true. show is to try and find things that Jess has got in her room uh, <laughs> she's whipped out a tiara so okay 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 so let's get to this story so this is a piece and honestly we're not even going to really dwell on the piece itself which is kind of a shame in a way we're going to talk about the WP drama side of things. This was a piece uh, by Tellyworth on WordPress, uh, make.wordpress.org, and it was called, it is called, Developing the, um, the Redesigned Home and Download Pages. And in this piece, Tellyworth uh, paints a picture of what's been going on over the last few days, or month, I should say, more like 33 mm-hmm. days, uh, in terms of getting this website designed and scoped out and getting people to cast their eyes over it and see what they think and really doing the typical job that you might do on make.wordpress.org to sort of flesh out exactly what's been happening and who's involved and so on. And then, so as is so often the case, it's the comments that cause the, the fuss. Um, you can see that the first comment was from Matt Mullenweg, who uh, on August the 9th wrote, this is not a good use of time, nor does it further the actual goals of a new homepage or download page, and we have better places to spend our development time. Now, as you That's may imagine... That's the exact same phrase that yeah, so, one of us working with Wilmer should use. We yeah. have better places to spend our time. <laughs> well, the, the you can imagine the comments. I mean, there were basically some people that came back and sort of, um, f- how to describe it? They, they thought that this was a little bit incendiary and a little bit ill-judged. Tellyworth came back in and, and, and spelled out exactly, in, and actually a really great length, why why they thought that this was not a, a particular waste of time and so on and so forth. And then Matt came back in and sort of said, yes, it doesn't feel like, 33 days is particularly quick for me and have implied that maybe it would be better to use some different tooling if things needed to move more quickly. Now, this obviously went off in Twitter and there was an awful lot of people saying things like, look, hang on a minute, is Matt saying that we would be better to use alternative tools than the, the block editor if it's going to be quicker and so forth? So I don't know if you guys have had a chance to sort of cogitate on this, to dwell on it, or what your thoughts are. And we'll get on to Cameron's thoughts with his article. But maybe I'll start with you, Cameron. What, what, what's what been your takeaway from this? Um, well, firstly, I've, I've wrote my article before I saw these comments, so they're not exactly directly related. Um, I, I know Tellyworth personally. Um, not particularly well, but he has been the official photographer at most, if not all WordCamps in Australia, which, you know, so, um, you know, make it that what you will. And so, you know, perhaps I'm, you know, have some bias from knowing them personally, but, um, yeah, it was probably not the wisest comment to make. Um, and you know, some of the points that Matt raises in his, uh, longer follow-up comments, um, you know, saying like, well, have we, you know, considered, you know, the comparing, you know, uh, the caching avenues and that sort of thing. It's like people were asking these sorts of questions five years ago and were practically ignored when it came to like how Gutenberg was being developed in the first place. Um, but now they only matter now that it's being put on their own site. Um, and, you know, if if for whatever reason Gutenberg isn't good enough for, you know, being used on WordPress.org itself, what does that say about this whole project? That's yeah, and that, kind of that feels to it. me like the bit which people got it. I think you encapsulated it really well there. If it's not, if it's not fit for being used in a, in a swift way, 
um, on the .org website, then what what is the use case for it if not there? Maybe maybe for a bit of context, I'll just read Matt's reply uh, if that's okay with everybody. It's fairly lengthy, but it might give it might give more context to the conversation. It says thirty days, sorry, thirty three days since project kickoff doesn't feel quick to me, but I think it's worth diving deeper into trying to figure trying to turn Figma trying sorry into not trying to turn Figma designs into themes quickly. Uh, but we are solving. But are we solving the right problem in the first? place what would you say are the actual goals of a new home page or a download page and how could you have developed how could you have all that development time going forwards i would guess we want more people converting to the key actions on the .org website and then he talks about a b testing and things like optimizely and so on and so forth and using php and include files uh, then he goes on to say, and I'm following the second paragraph here, you could imagine a world where instead of taking more than a month to launch a single design, which implies a maximum rate of under 12 of these could be done in a year. So we make 20 to 30 designs up front, ideally with a different approach and copy and focus our development time on measuring the success. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. So I won't carry on reading. I'll just sort of pause there. I think I've got the tenor of it there. Um, so Jess, what's what have been the the bits and pieces that you've kept, picked up on Twitter or elsewhere about this? Have you had any you had any thoughts on this personally, or seen the, the the Twitter storm that developed? Well, I just would like to say it does seem that whenever something like this happens, I end up co-hosting that week. <laughs> it's it's designed, Jess. <laughs> it's very much planned. <laughs> so pressable being owned by automatic. I think I do have a little bit of a different perspective here. Um, and at risk of sounding like an apologist, I read the comments differently than other people. It looks to me like honest feedback. And sometimes we don't like feedback. I think had I written this in response to it, people would be responding differently. But because it's Matt, they're, you know, understandably responding in a different way. Um, but, you know, people were pushing back later in the thread and they're going to proceed. Um, you know, a later comment was made that the time for questions and feedback had already passed. This kicked off some time ago. Um, but, you know, the, the question, the probing question to, is this really going to accomplish our goals? Are we answering the right question? <laughs> I will say that, you know, those, those are questions that are hard to hear in a positive way in the moment sometimes because you don't know for sure if you are answering that question. And then I think there's like an instinct inside of us and we're like, yes, of course we're doing it right. Um, but, you know, I, I think that part of what I've learned, you know, over years has been that it's, it's best for me to stop in that moment and ask, what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Hmm. Now, I obviously have not taken the time to read what the goals of the homepage and the download page redesign were. Um, so I can't speak as to whether it actually does match that. But I do think that we get kind of pearl clutchy whenever Matt says something that makes us uncomfortable. You're going to have to explain that, explain that phrase to me. What does pearl clutchy mean? Clutching our pearls. Oh, he said something and it sounded uh, okay. rude. Right, right, right. So basically you're saying there's an element of... So as an example, if I had written that exact comment, uh, nobody would have possibly even replied because it's me and not Matt. Whereas the, the fact that Matt had said it, there's an element of posturing and, as you described it, pearl clutching that goes on because we don't like to hear anything uh, from that source that's, that's controversial or opinionated. Well, and admittedly, I think there have been some things that have happened in recent months that have people kind of knee-jerky whenever he says something. Right. Um, and so I think there's some element of that. But at the same time... He is the head of, you know, this project. And so rightly so, his words are given a little more weight. I think, though, he does ask some important questions. And the answer is, I don't know the answer. Um, but I just I see it a little differently this time. Mm -hmm. That's interesting as well, because let's say that the WordPress project was a for profit corporation with shareholders and all of that. I guess Matt would be just doing this in a boardroom and you know, telling people often saying, look, we're not doing it that way. We're going to do it this way because this is the way I want it done. And in this scenario, th th that's not the way it's done. So it's all done out in the open 
And um, and I guess to expect anybody to tread on eggshells all the time, permanently 365 days of the year and not give an opinion would be a little bit unreasonable. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, angle on it, Jess, and an important one. So he's raising questions that needed to be asked and, um, yeah, ask it. But also it was... interesting that you said that he was shot down in a sense as well because the process had been gone through, the time had elapsed for him to make comments that were going to, you know, incisively change the way it was going to be done. So it led its course and probably its WP drama of this week and not next week. I saw Daniel just popped in and I was actually thinking about his tweets on the mm. matter. Daniel, um, I, I do want your opinion on this, actually. So this is Dan Daniel Schultzsmith, who's just come into the comments because he I think Daniel's got a very different opinion to you, Jess, in that I think he thinks that um, that this kind of thing is not the way that you're going to encourage... Let me try and encapsulate Dan's thoughts. Sorry, Dan, to put words into your mouth. I think your tweet implied, if you want new, fresh blood into WordPress, the, a surefire way to stifle that from happening would be for the, for, the, for the team at the top, if you like, for want of a better word, uh, to be having a go at the people who are volunteering their time. And that's where this gets really tricky as well, isn't it? It's the whole volunteer bit. And as soon as the volunteer bit comes in, everybody starts to say, well, you know, we're largely just volunteers. Uh, Christian, I know that we've locked you out of this conversation thus far, and I don't want to. So can we hand it over to you? Uh, yeah, sure. I forgot that Jessica works for Pressable, which is, you know, uh, an automatic owned company. So now I have to rethink my sentences around this. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. No, so uh, don't get me wrong. So the way I've seen it from the outside and the way I've, I've, I've looked at it was like, this has happened to me as well. Whenever I've handed down um, ownership of a project or leadership without being very specific and strict about the guidelines, rules, timelines, and everything like that. And then I came back, you know, let's say 33 days uh, and took a look at where the project currently is. I was unhappy. Like in my mind, I had very different expectations of that project. So what I, I think we're seeing right now is Matt imagined something then he came in and looked at what's happening. He was like, what the heck's going on? Like you're taking way too much to do this. One of the other issue I think that's that's coming up from this uh, from those phrases and sentences is he realizes that it's far easier to iterate over a design in pure HTML and PHP, test it, A/B test it, figure out which version is the best one, and then move on to implementing that one into Gutenberg. And people just you know flock to this and are like, "Holy shit, you finally understand." our issues with Gutenberg and how difficult it is to iterate. And everyone jumped at that and was like, yeah, you finally get it. You finally took a look at it. You finally realize how long it takes to put something out there live. And you're finally understanding our pains. Now, probably he hasn't you know, put himself into, into the shoes of a day-to-day -day developer that has to do this for clients day in and day out with all the Gutenberg changes out there. And I'm not blaming him for that because he has so many things to manage, right? This is... Like it's it's impossible to ask him to do everything, um, but people saw an opportunity and took it. Right, uh, I think it's the classic example of how loosely managed automatic is, and that's part, you know, uh, by design, by choice. It also encourages a, uh, a lot of create, creative work, but it also can stammer, you know. Uh, uh, progress really fast progress because it'll take yeah. your time without any strict deadlines and so I, I agree with Jessica's point like I see it differently than other people but I do see the pain points as well that he's now experiencing himself without probably ever thinking about him and was probably caught off guard like when he thought about that sentences and typed it out I don't think he realized the impact it's going to have and how well that will resonate with the audience and how they'll, they're going to pick at it and tear it apart like sentence by sentence and go like, yeah, this is our problems. We've been crying about this for five years plus. Yeah, that's an interesting point in that his his words uh, really do get dissected, don't they? <laughs> like really dissected uh, for the for the tiniest nuance or... But, but they had like a lot of nuance, right? That like yes. all that, that entire phrase, like it was a long, long phrase, had a lot of, you know, um, meaning to it. 
like it, it painted the bigger picture. Like you could see the entire workflow, like do this in HTML, use optimizely A-B test, which we all know takes a few months and do all of these uh, one after the other. And in the end, you'll have your winning version and then you can move into Gutenberg. Like anyone who's ever done this process know how painful it can be, right? Especially with Gutenberg making breaking changes almost every three to six months. Um, and everyone saw that process and then started picking at all those small problems along the process. And, you know, finally they could resonate with what Matt said and that pent up, you know, uh, frustration that's been accumulated in all these years. Like no one's hearing our voices now. Finally, Matt's hearing it. Let's, let's, let him, let's let him, let's let him have it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Let's get the barrels out. Okay. Let's, let's, Daniel, thank you for uh, posting some longer comments that we can read out and give your opinion. Um, so Daniel says, and by the way, this is in one of his uh, tweets. One of Daniel's tweets was mentioned in the article, which we may or may not, I can't remember if it comes up later, but it was mentioned in an article um, as a as an important talking point around this, this story. Uh, Daniel says, an issue to me was that the critical feedback in public from a leader has a critical bias that is not there as a peer. And my suggestion was that Matt should lead with empathy and emotional intelligence rather than popping in every now and again and then dropping bombs. Okay. And he carries on. Uh, Christian mentions a great point. It finally showed Matt how difficult the Gutenberg, Gutenberg actually is uh, for some designs. And I'm just going to miss out Peter's comment and go to Daniel's final one. Matt's word carry the most weight of anyone in WordPress, and he needs to be aware of how he talks to people or it's going to discourage people from even joining. Yeah, that was the bit of your comment that I remembered, the, 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 the way that if, if, if you alienate, then uh, that's going to discourage people in the future. And then Peter's saying, great points about the hit and run type messaging. Making himself a lightning rod is at the very least a distraction. It doesn't help. Yeah, it's, it's curious as well, isn't it? Because it's not like a tweet. Um, I, I want to make a point here. So yeah. if, if you can just circle back for like two minutes. Mm. Sorry, 30 seconds. Um, the hit and run type of messaging is something that I personally understand because when you're extremely busy and you try to make time in your in your schedule for every single thing, like everything is important, like everyone wants your opinion and values your opinion and puts a lot of uh, weight on your words, uh, there's no way you can be everywhere, right? But you do realize that your input is uh, important, so you try to give it and be as constructive and as succinct as possible with the allocated time you have. Just imagine this for a second. You've been, I don't know, working nonstop for eight hours and you've got five minutes to read this piece, see exactly where it's going, what the project is, and you've got five minutes to express your thoughts as clearly and concisely as possible and leave the people to digest all the information you've just expressed as well as let them act on it, right? It takes time. It's not necessarily hit and run. It's like, I did the best I could with the time I had. Don't be so judgy about it because I, I can't spend time here. Right? But it's easy. Like if he steps in right now, if he stop, steps in into this live call we're having right now, uh, delegating proper. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. But at the same time, you're not going to weigh other people's words as heavy as you weigh Matt's. So, you know, he's still trying to get involved in the community and make, make sure he's part of the community. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's the best approach, but I think it's better than seeing nothing and never being, you know, at least um, trying to show people he's reading the same sources as us and seeing the same information as us. That's a really because good I think, point. Yeah. Because I think that's extremely important for the community to realize he's actually trying, he's putting in a lot of effort. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. Don't, don't get me wrong. And I think sometimes employees should be rattled. Uh, probably if Nathan could put up this comment on, a, on, a, on, the, on the screen right now. Yeah, sometimes I think they need rattling, you know, heavily opinionated here. But when you take 33 days to push out a design, it's just a design without any, you know, clear objectives. You should really think why you do that. Uh, if it's just graphical, maybe it makes uh, no sense. Just sorry for the long rant about it. But, no, it's okay. No, it's, okay. it's no. an interesting point. A couple of things come out of that for me. The first thing is, um, yes, the the fact that this is a, an official WordPress channel 
as opposed to like a tweet or something, you know, where you just drop some kind of incendiary bomb and wander off. Uh, it, it is indicative, you know, it is in the right place and it is opinionated, which is, I guess, what comments kind of ought to be. It, it, there, was, there was no hint in that for me of, you know, of, um, of being inflammatory or abusive, but I think some people took it as more kind of unhelpful um, and what have you. And I, I, I've got, got to have a little bit of empathy for anybody, I suppose, and it wouldn't just be Matt Mullenweg, it would be kind of anybody who whose words are under the microscope in that way. I, I, I Personally, I would, I would really find that aspect of life really difficult if i knew that every single thing that i said was going to be dissected from every angle by uh and you still kept millions of and people you still yeah. kept at it right and you still kept yeah. doing it even though the entire community like every time judges you and yeah let's just put up well, the um let's just put sorry jess you carry on and i'll put up the comments just, as you... yeah just one quick thing to daniel's point you know and he's right we all want him and the project to be successful for years it's the delivery that needs tweaking i just want to point out nobody talks about the times that matt comments and it's not wp drama i think most of the time when he is working it, it's not newsworthy because it's not as i said earlier curl pro clutchy yeah. um uh, that would be quite, that would be quite on, interesting, right? actually. It would be it would be quite an interesting... I mean, nobody's going to do this work, but it would be quite interesting to see uh, if you took uh, Photo Matt's Twitter stream and all of the comments that he's made, it, you know, let's say WordPress, make.wordpress.org. It would be interesting to see how many of them were a cause of drama. I suppose the counter-argument to that is, well, if you are in that position... You've got to be very, very mindful that it could anything could be read in any which of way. Of course, um, of course, yeah. and Lord knows I have tasted at least seven or eight pairs of my shoes in the last two years. You know, like <laughs> who among us hasn't said something truly regrettable in a public forum? It's it's easy to do that actually. Yeah. So if you don't hide be behind a, a communications team like a PR team that thinks about these kinds of things and tries to and, and you've seen how uh, sterile those types of messages are like they're sentences that barely say anything and yeah. most uh ceos of huge companies hide between the behind those companies and just stick to a script right you rarely see those unscripted chats oh matt's yeah. stepping out and going unscripted here and saying his thoughts and people are like no we hate your ideas you, we want you more involved right that's that's still right uh, so feedback, not necessarily valuable or actionable. And I get why the frustration, but we have to realize he's just one guy. He's never going to be able to split himself across so many different, uh, you know, aspects of the business. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot to do with a business that mm -hmm. size, insane amount. Of it. Well, and that's just, the, that's the front side, the not profit side. Remember, he's got the whole profit side too. Oh yeah, um, and Daniel's always saying, thinking about the future and being challenged, you know, by huge comp competition. It's the time uh, it took. Daniel saying he's questioning the time it took. Do you mean the time it took for the thirty-three for, days, or do you mean yeah, the, time the thirty-three it took? days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, time. Okay, here we go. He follows up. Time it takes for developing or designing is subjective, based on all the commitment, skill level, so, etc. Yeah, and also the nature of the nature of the, the the way that things are done in the WordPress community, aren't they? You know, it's not it's not like okay, here's six people deployed in a company who are on full time payroll, and we can tell them exactly what to do and deploy them however we like. And we expect everything to be done in you know eight and a half hours or whatever it may be. Um, it's a very different thing, and I confess. Jess, I'd missed the bit at the end where they said that the conversation was locked out anyway because uh, the time was up and all of the usual processes had been gone through. So that is the WP drama for this week. Well, kind of, because, uh, well, we got Cameron here. And uh, <laughs> Cam Cam Cameron's, Cam Cameron's getting us back into a subject which we covered a few weeks ago, and I think it's an important subject to carry on. If that's all right, I'm not entirely sure that we we dealt with it in the perfect way. Here, hang on, let me let me get ready for Cameron. Okay, there we go. There we right. go. There we I think go. what I'm you ready. need. To, no, I'm not sure it's ready. I don't think we need it's the full the blown Viking hat this time. I think the tiara would be satisfactory. Tiara, this, but yeah, go for the tiara. It's not quite the trouble. 
<laughs> Look, the size of the head object is directly proportional to the nature of the of the drama. So I want to introduce you to Cameron's blog. It's uh, cameronjonesweb.com.au. CameronJonesWeb.com.au. I will try to put the the link on the screen in just a minute. I failed to make a little piece of text for that. And uh, and Cameron's taken his pen to paper this this week uh, with a post entitled "Why I'm Not Sold on Five for the Future." Normally, it's me explaining these articles. That would be ridiculous in this particular case. So, Cameron, all I'll say is Five for the Future is the idea that companies, individuals give 5% of their, I'm going to use the word resources, because I don't know how that word, you know, it could be time, it could be, um, well, yeah, it could be all sorts of things, but that's what it is. Um, And you've, you're not sold on it. Tell us why. Well, funnily enough, I wrote a 2000 word blog piece. So go read that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, well, there's, there's a variety of different reasons. Um, you know, uh, the the influence that Automatic has on the project and the whole murky waters between, uh, like, who is really running the show, um, just how 5% is actually quantified. Um, and Rob Howard from Master WP had a, a really good um, analysis on, you know, the the toxic scorekeeping elements of, you know, keeping track of hours and comparing them, you know, like we saw it was weaponized in, you know, the whole GoDaddy tweet storm. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, several reasons, unfortunately. Um, yeah, read the blog post. Do you think, though, that, I mean, essentially, you, you're ha- having read it, there's quite a lot in there. But um, first of all, let's tackle the the thing about what this bit here, what is a contribution at the moment, you know, so, for example, does this count? Um, no. Does this act? No, I mean, sh- okay, let me reword that. Should this count? No, let me reword that again. Let me go back to the beginning. L- let's let's go through all the things which do count. So at the minute, we've got um, basically putting in time to developing into core. Is that is that where it, it ends? Is that where your 5% can go? It's a bit more than that. It's... Mm-hmm. To my knowledge, the best of my knowledge, it's contributing to a make team. So um, that does usually tends to involve writing code for WordPress core. Um, it can involve other things like um, uh, like WordPress.org is running things like diverse speaker training and that sort of thing. And that's coming under one of the make teams and that sort of thing. So that's obviously not writing code for core at all. And, you know, that's would count towards it. Um, And, you know, marketing, like the new homepage and download page and whatever, you know, whoever's designing that, you know, if they're being sponsored, that would come under that because it's contributing to a make team. Um, But then, yeah, there's obviously a, a lot of things that don't count that, you know, aren't, you know, make team contributions. And it feels to me from the article, we've got it on the screen at the moment, but we'll we'll read out some other things. Are you? Do you think it would be a good idea to broaden the scope of that so that the net is cast wider? So basically, if it's anything to do with WordPress, the promotion of WordPress, the creation of new things in WordPress, anything that promotes WordPress, that ought to come under the umbrella and therefore uh, a new definition of what that 5% is. Not necessarily. Like I think, I think it can be broadened a little bit, but I do think that more or less it is. You know, the the right things are being counted and the wrong ones aren't. You know, like this podcast doesn't count. Um, I'm going to leave and now. It probably shouldn't. I'm gonna but going. it I'm gonna go off to the side where again. where my main grief comes with it in terms of what counts, especially, is there is this attitude that if you're not contributing to five for the future to the things that count, you're not doing real contributions. Right. Whereas, you know, I think this podcast is a very valuable contribution to the community. I don't necessarily think it should count towards five for the future, but it Mm. shouldn't be disrespected and disregarded in the way that I feel the current rhetoric around five for the future is doing. So, you know, 
calling people free riders because they're not participating in the fire for the future program and calling them a parasitic existential threat to the project um, because they're not contributing enough um, hours, according to your opinion. It's, you know, GoDaddy sponsors this podcast. You know, they sponsor other podcasts, they sponsor events and stuff, but, you know, it was only, oh, there's 9,000 employees and they're only doing 200 hours or whatever it was, you know. Not, yeah. not that it should count towards it, It's but it should be at least acknowledged. Uh, yeah. On a five-star rating system, if, if five-star was the top, and you know, five for the future, I think WP Builds f- f- sits firmly in the one for the future. The one quite star, generous. Think, yeah. Well, I think, so. all right, half. Can we go with half, Cameron? Half for the sure. future. The 0.5 for the future. If you, uh, if you manage to post this on Twitter. Okay, that's right. right. Yeah. You can yeah. go for a full start. Right. But it's, it is really interesting because there are an awful lot of people doing an awful lot of things and much of it thankless, much of it obviously coming under the umbrella that Cameron's just described. You know, um, it, it goes channels in directly to a make team, therefore it counts. But a lot of people doing a lot of other things. So you've just mentioned sponsorship, things like the sponsorship of this podcast, this podcast itself the fact that you three are on it giving up your time uh in order to you know help spread the word and and in some way help the wordpress ecosystem none of that counts and as you say cameron perhaps rightly so but maybe the net does need to be cast a little bit wider let's throw it open to jess and christian see what they think oh my god uh, <laughs> that's all <laughs> I, I, like it's the first time i'm meeting cameron and i haven't read the post I know what the Fire for the Future program is. I know as a plugin shop owner, what frustrates me about it because they, they said like the people who are contributing the most to the Fire for the Future program are going to get uh, first access into WordPresses.com plugin store that's been announced for like a year or so by now. They're going to get uh, beta, beta invites into that program. And I'm obviously not one of those people. Uh, but I think I, I think the sentence that if you're contributing to any other activity than the ones listed here, you're not making real contributions was spin up, spin spun off into a meaning I wouldn't attribute to. So personally, I wouldn't say you're not contributing at all. At all, it's not reading that sentence. It's not what I understand. It's not you're not helping the, you know the product move into the direction we want to move because we, so how I see it, we have a lot of challenges on our plate with out of all the huge list of places where you could contribute. We've already hired people and put people into places and frameworks and processes and whatnot. But these are the areas where we still need help. And we think that even people with no experience could get involved and actually make an impact and have their uh, and see their work uh, put live. So, for example, I, I think I've opened two tickets eight years ago on track. They're still there. No one worked no on one Cameron feels your pain. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, but, don't get me wrong. So, uh, if you were a developer today and you went into contributing to one of the, you know, track tickets or hundreds of thousands of track tickets, most likely your work wouldn't see day of, uh, the light of day. It's, that's 99% of the track tickets. The way I see it is like, where could we, what areas of the WordPress project, community, foundation, however you want to call this, because there's many aspects to it, right? Uh, could we lower the bar so, so much that everyone can enter, everyone can get sort of a gratification feeling like, it ends in a point and you've accomplished your task and maybe see your work live. And it's, it's always easy to pick at these sentences, right? Again, put this hat on and think, this is the time he had to write that sentence. This is the be- best he could come up with. Was it perfect? Obviously not. Uh, am I making up excuses for him? No, I'm trying to be as honest as possible. The Fight for the Future program frustrates me as hell especially because it affects my business. Uh, can I change it? No. Will, will I get involved in Fire for the Future just to get access to the WordPress plugin store or whatever it's going to be called? Probably not. It's easy. You don't like it. You don't contribute. 
it's easy. You want to contribute, you contribute without second guessing his intentions about it. That's how I see it. I'm sorry if this goes against Cameron's post. Not my intention. I haven't read his post. Not really. Fully. Oh, okay, okay. No, it's, okay. You're broadly, I think, talking along the same lines. Cameron, I don't know if it was in your post, I can't remember now, or in Rob Howard's post, where he was talking about the the expansion of like, things like badges, um, whereby it, it would there would be... So in, in much the same way, if you signed up to, a, I don't know, an, an LMS-based course, and you, you make your way through certain criteria, you get certain badges along the way. I wonder if... I wonder if that is a is a useful thing to do in the future is to split the the community at large into various different subcategories many of which when WordPress started were just ir- irrelevant because they didn't exist so you know like media um people who contribute to documentation and so on obviously that's under the umbrella of but all sorts of different things and people who contribute in those ways and can provably uh, say that they've done certain things should get that particular badge. I myself, for example, would get the Viking helmet badge for having created multiple blog, you know, podcast episodes and that kind of thing. I, I feel for me that that probably wouldn't make a difference. I'm not really doing it for the badges, but I could see that for some people who are starting out, those little things might make a might make a nice and solid difference if you could display on your WordPress.org profile that you've got, I don't know, 12 There's badges. There's a here as well, by the yeah, way. Yeah, but, but more and more and more different ones, diverse range of, of different activities that you can be involved with. Let's open it up to Jess and see if she's got any thoughts. Well, um, case in point, I was the co-host when this broke as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, what's going on, Jess? I've, <laughs> I've already shared my thoughts. As well? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to uh, check in the diary when you're next back on so that we can calculate yeah, to the day when the Twitter. next scandal is going to break. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Well, I've, I've already spoken extensively on my thoughts with this. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I serve on the hosting team. And that's because I'm interested in hosting. Obviously, it kind of serves my purpose professionally. Um, but you know, I really like the people on the team. I enjoy being a part of the conversation. I enjoy having a seat at the table. Um, I enjoy, you know, contributing to make things better. And by the way, our team works in coordination with a whole bunch of other teams. And I think a lot of people, um, have thoughts on five for the future and they're all valid for them, of course. Um, but I would encourage people to just check out the teams that are available, you know, it's, it's easy to say, well, I just want to write blog posts and make that count. Cool. Have you ever been to a marketing team meeting? I think you might find you can contribute to that and also do what you love. And, um, and no one says you know, that's not a real the, contribution. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> just, just simply putting it out there that when you take five for the future title and all that other stuff away, what's behind it is really beautiful and amazing. And there's a lot of really, really good people that you can connect with and work together toward a greater good. And that's what I think matters more than labels, badges, and whatever other mathematical equations you want to put into the value of your time. Yeah, I want really hard maths to be applied to this. Impenetrably yeah. difficult maths and Viking helmets. I see that as the solution. Understandable. Personally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. why don't they all just come for, to me for the answers? I'll give them... Grains of wisdom like that. Viking helmets and impenetrable. Public Bills needs a swagster. <laughs> okay. no. Well, I mean. yeah, Viking. He- yes, yes, the Viking T-shirt. Oh my gosh! Oh dear. Yeah, I know. I, I can know. see it. The you helmets, know? right? Yeah. Yeah. Viking WordPress <laughs> now got a tiara. <laughs> Jess, we're going into business. We're going to launch a clothing <laughs> brand with Viking helmets and tiaras. We're going to be millionaires. And you can honestly turn this into like sort of uh, custom emojis. <laughs> Oh, and like no. any time there's drama, you just add the, the Viking helmet or the tiara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm going to link in the show notes to a whole bunch of other articles, which we probably don't have time to discuss here. But Cameron wanted me to highlight. I'll just put them on the screen quickly because uh, I want to give them. Whoops, is that going to come back? Yes, um, because they they encapsulate some of the things that Cameron wanted to talk about. This one is the WP Review article. This is Joe Casabona, uh, and it's entitled, If You Really Want to Democratize Publishing, You Need Free Riders. Uh, so that's people who use WordPress uh, without ever 
uh, thinking about five for the future. And then there's two articles by Rob Howard. One is a slightly older one. This is back in July entitled Toxic Scorekeeping, the case against five for the future. And you can imagine from the title what that goes into. And then a much more recent post that was this uh, just this week, Saving the Future and Solving the Free Rider Problem again over on Master WP. So that debate can be be held but i will make sure to put cameron's post uh in the show notes as well but if you go to cameronjonesweb.com.au and search for this why i'm not sold on five for the future and uh leave a comment there and let cameron know what you think okay i like this i'm just going to say that right off the bat i think this is very cool this is sarah gooding writing on wp tavern it's called new 2023 default three theme now in development we're well we're into the latter part of 2022 so it's time to dust off and get developing a new theme each year we have a new one and it drops uh, as regular as clockwork now this is going to be very very difficult for me to describe but it's a very different approach imagine basically a wireframe in the past we've had fairly opinionated default themes so they've come with a set of styles and, you know, they look the way they look and you can go in in the customizer and play with it to your heart's content and modify it. But it, it's it's bound by the choices that the designers made to a great extent. This is a really different take um, and automatic director Ch- Channing Ritter, sorry, design director Channing Ritter published a piece of what the theme might look like. And I, I just think this is such an interesting departure from what we've normally had. So essentially, what you're presented with is a a website which you could never deploy as it is. It's got placeholders for images, and they're not placeholders in the sense of, you know, it's in a a lorem ipsum type default theme of some flowers in a garden or something. It's literally a rectangle with a line drawn through it. So you can't just be away with the, you know, you can't just publish it right away. And a whole load of sort of styling choices on the right-hand side in the panel. And you can change the way all of the things like the spacing and the padding and all of that works. And it just presents to me just a really different opportunity rather than download theme, modify, click, publish, and you're off. With this one, a little bit more thought is required. So I like it. I like the way this is heading, but I like to tinker and I do like a blank canvas. So I don't know whether it's going to suit everybody, but it strikes me as a really, really interesting one. Let me just quickly play this video. If you're watching at the moment, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So you can see on the right, uh, Channing is selecting different options, and you can see this, the padding changes, the images, the spacing between things change around, and it's just really, really different for a default WordPress theme. So over to you guys. What do you make of it? I'd say that themes have been moving away from being opinionated designs into just being like a collection of functions that are generally applied across the entire site, like, you know, font choice, uh, color choice, that kind of stuff. For many years now, that's what made Generate Press, WP Astra, Neve, and whichever other blocks you like the top form of popular themes, that's what made them so popular because they they start stopped, sorry, they stopped delivering specific designs and they just started giving back the freedom to the user and allowing them to choose whichever page builder they wanted to complete their website design. But like they switched from being a, a design framework to an utility framework because that's that's basically what themes are nowadays. They bundle up a lot of utility that makes it easy to change core aspects but not design related aspects necessarily. Those can be tweaked with skins. Uh, for example, in blocks you have a lot of, which is our theme of choice right now across the entire websites. We've built our websites on Gutenberg and Bloxy. I think that's currently the best theme ever built. Sorry to everyone else, let's raise the bar. Um, and yeah, I think it's the logical, natural choice to go with this approach instead of a heavily opinionated design, which sometimes it, it you know people like it, sometimes they don't. But it's 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 sort of a very very specific niche purpose, right? Yeah, I just, 
I was just going to say, I wonder what, what um, you know, what, what inexperienced WordPress users, you know, c- coming into WordPress for the first time, I wonder, wonder what they would make of something like this. Because it's clearly, it's clearly a, a, a template users? to use. How many but inexperienced it, users do you think WordPress still has or gets? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. I think a lot that, would be my answer. Well, yeah. The growth rate has plateaued and has been plateauing for like two years now. It's not a lot of new users stepping into this space. Like it's growing, but not at, at the rate it used to be. Those new users who started two years ago are at least capable of changing plugins and playing around with settings and clicking stuff around to make changes. I just, I personally love stuff like this. It just seems like, I don't know, it's the kind of exact canvas that I, I would like to look at yep. because I can do whatever I want with it. But I, I do I do wonder if it's maybe a little too bare bones for other people. Anyway, over to Cameron and Jess, see what they think about this. But they still have choices, right? Yeah. You still yeah, true. have. Sorry, that was it. Everyone else, please. Cameron. Sure. If not, I'll move on. Um I don't have many thoughts. Um, I, I don't particularly like the way full site editing is being introduced, so I'm unlikely to use this. Um, but my my only real thoughts are, you know, it it's clearly being named 2023, and I know there was some discussion recently about not doing, you know, 2020 X themes, yeah, and just yeah. having the one. Just so, one. like, is this? is this meant to be it or is there going to be a 2024? Like, have we reached that point yet or not? Cause like, obviously that is the point that full site editing is trying to get us to is that themes are yeah, not opinionated. They're just a basic framework and your blocks are everything. So, you know, does, does calling it 2023 mean that we're not at that point yet? Um, and that we're going to get a 2024 or that it'll, come sometime in the future or is 2023 going to be the wordpress theme in you know for eternity i don't know if there's anybody who is making wordpress themes watching this at the moment or listening to it after the fact um be curious to know what your thoughts are on that because i do wonder from what cameron just said yeah that that message is ringing clear in my head you know we just some people saying well we just need this basic the theme whatever that looks like, and everything will be blocks from there on in and you can use full site editing to to modify it as you see fit. I just think the I just think the canvas, I really like it. I just like all of the icons on the right where you can fiddle and it's really visual, but it doesn't lock you in and you've got to have a bit of imagination to make it start. I guess the only concern that I would have is that I think for people who are not experienced with playing with page design, not just website design, but page design, it would be quite easy to come up with something extremely mediocre based upon what you're given, Um, you know, because it's just this one solid color background. And I don't know, I don't know. Someone who's built custom themes in the past and sold them to clients, I can promise you, even if you give them a design, they can turn it into <laughs> yeah. So don't don't take that away from them. Uh, we've <laughs> built we 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 tried extensively to build themes that were you know we tested with like two hundred plugins to make sure that anytime they install one of those plugins, it's still gonna look great, right? And they still managed to find that one plugin <laughs> they could install that would fuck up the entire website and make it look like crap. So they were super happy about it. Like, <laughs> if you want a designer, just they just don't know it yet. It's bound to happen. Yeah, it's an interesting future if we do get to the point where you just drop in the theme and blocks makes everything up. Hopefully, there'll be less of what you've just described, Christian. Any thoughts on this, Jess, or should we move on? Uh, I'm just thinking of a world where I have three independent sliders, each moving at different times at the top of my website. Yep. See see how that works for my theme? Uh, anyway, okay. I, I, some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. Well, I have one slider when you can have three. Oh, you've got to have three sliders, at least three, I think, at least with three. Viking helmets. Let's move on. Um, okay, so we've had um, we've had Vito Peleg on this podcast many, many times before. You may 
may have known about him. He's uh, behind Atarim, which is a, a, a SaaS product. But it started out as a WordPress plugin called WP Feedback. And it allows you to um, essentially interact with your clients. And the clients have an interface where they can comment on things that they would like you to amend or change or design iterations and things like that. Uh, and it's a great standalone tool. But WordPress also has a plugin called MainWP. And if you haven't used MainWP before, I really think it's a solid solution. I've got it up and running, and I'm really happy with it. It's been ticking over for about five years with not a single problem so far. It's uh, a solution which allows you to you connect it to your WordPress sites, let's typically say your clients' websites, and it allows you to log into one dashboard and update all the things. There's many, 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 many more bells and whistles, but that's basically what it's intended to do. The two companies have got together and formed an integration, which I think is really neat, in that if you have both Atrium and MainWP, um, you'll be constantly logging into both of them to try and see whether there's been any activity. Do plugins need updating? That's MainWP. Has the client given us any commentary that we need to look at, that's Atarim. And whilst that's fine, if you could remove one of those steps, that would be good. And that's what this does. The idea would be that you go to your main WP dashboard and there's now a, an, an extra bit added to the row associated with each website. And if the clients have made some commentary, so you can see on a picture here, the clients have been going around the website and they've made 12 little comments and Main WP just now alerts you to the fact that that's happened. Um, I'm guessing that you'll click on this icon, this button, and then you'll go to the website and you'll be logged in. You'll be able to use all of the Atarim goodness. But I just think tools like this getting together, you know, it's not a takeover. It's just a collaboration, and it seems like a really neat one. Your thoughts? I just want to say that I personally love Main WP, and I love the yep. team over at Atarim. Um, I'm very excited to see this work together, and I know that some of our customers will absolutely be excited to use it. Yep. Really good people all around. Yeah. And just like a really neat idea. You know, it's, it, it's not going to save you hours in a week, but it might save you hours in a year. Um, yeah. And it's just the sort of thing that you need. You know, if, if, if you've got a piece of software which is taking care of commentary, and it can bolt into the thing which you're logging into every day. Basically, I log into main WP every day. I don't really do the client website stuff so much anymore. But if I did, and I could just see a big blue button, and by the way, there's nothing really blue in the main WP UI, well, unless you theme it that way, but it really would stand out. You'd be able to see it right away. Okay, something needs taken care of. It's just a, a nice, little, nice little feature, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Love that. Okay. Uh, okay, if neither of the others have got anything to say about that, shall we move on? Um, Gutenberg 13.8, this is Sarah Gooding over on WP Tavern. Gutenberg 13.8 introduces fluid typography, typography support and revamped quote block. I'm probably not going to touch on the quote block, but let's just, let's just all watch this video. Um, the idea being that you'll be able to set without doing things like media queries and what have you. Um, the article says, theme JSON already allows authors to insert their own fluid font style values. This won't change, but this PR offers it to folks who don't want to worry about it. Theme developers who want to opt into fluid typography only need to set typography.fluid to be true in the theme.json and add fluid to each of the, well, blah, 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 settings and so on. I just think this is really nice. It looks like a really nice implementation. The idea that you'll be able to, look at that. That just looks cool, right? Just really sure does. Nice to see. One, one important note, though, is this is actually being built into the 2023 theme. Oh, tell me more. What, so you'll be able to do this, this thing that we're watching on the screen right now where it's shrinking and growing? Locked and loaded. Fluid Locked typography. Loaded. Okay, okay. So that's nice. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a minor little thing, but I thought I'd mention it. Anything from anybody apart from Jess, because she's just says. I think they link... Uh, fluid typography is insanely difficult. Yep. This has been, this has existed as a CSS solution for like maybe 10 years, 12 yep. years, more maybe. Uh, but even back then, getting fonts, headings, and sizes to scale down with their parent elements, 
It's never easy, like finding that perfect scale and balance across screen resolutions. What Media Queries did though, they locked, it, locked you in into specific designs, right? Specific breakpoints, sorry. And someone ensured that at those specific breakpoints, you'd have, you know, not a perfect, but an ideal experience. What Fluid Typography does, it adapts the entire layout across all the possible breakpoints. So you're never gonna get the same experience with this website. So interesting, but I can only see it working in very simple use cases, such as a very minimalistic typography-based blog or publication, news websites, stuff like that. It's extremely challenging to get fluid typography working on a real website. When I'm saying real website, I'm thinking about one with sliders, with three sliders, with, <laughs> you, know, you know, contact pages. Like and, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you can, for, for a second, just imagine uh, in any commerce store with a lot of traffic that implements this, it's not going to be not challenging. I basically look at the web. I'm just trying to think to myself, how, what, what are the varieties of different screen sizes that I use? And basically, I'm bound to two different things. I'm on this computer. Oh, no, you, you are, because you don't realize how many knockoff, cheap, cheap devices there are on the planet. Yeah. And coming from China mainly. And they have these weird ass resolutions. Because with built an image gallery plugin, we get requests such as on our support channels, we get people saying, uh, I just put your gallery up on my whatever brand name TV they got there. And it has this 594 pixels by Adam. 594, so you imagine it's a square. It's a square, okay, it's a square. I don't know, I, I, I just okay, all right. It up, but it's, it's, <laughs> in, it's, it's the, it varies so much, it's insane. And that is interesting. It, it, it doesn't look perfect. And I'm like, here, like, Hold on, so what do I have to do now? Should I fly to China, buy one of these TVs, like buy a new apartment, furnish it just with TVs from floor to you know, ceiling because there's so many brands and so many different resolutions and it constantly being updated. What do I do now? Yeah, that's and a good so many point. different browsers as well. Yeah, yeah, these, yeah, yeah, these yeah. You're have... right. I'm either looking at it like that on my phone Never like that. I've given oh, up yeah. holding. Like, does anybody browse the web that way on their phone? When did a that? A lot of people do. Videos. Oh, video. Yeah, it's that's that's the only case, right? You click the little enlarge button, and it's a video. It, 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 sometimes there. text. Sometimes. Yeah. Text oh, really? Like that? Oh no, never. Well, no, if Jess. they don't, if the page is not responsive, or if oh, an email is going over it. the margins. Yep. Got it. Okay. So I'm basically two two resolutions. That's all I kind of need to think about me. But it's just this, you. this yeah. monitor. Yeah, exactly. And this phone, that way round, orientated for text. But so, you're right. I hadn't I hadn't really given enough thought that to the multitude of different sizes. Yeah, that's built in browsers as well. So Instagram, yeah. Facebook, anytime you open a link, they're gonna default, especially on iPhones. So this is different on Android, but on iPhone it just has a built in browser, which is you know way, way dumber than the one you have on your phone. So that's going to be entire. it's going to react entirely different, you know, with fluid typography and fluid everything. So it's going to break stuff easily yeah. and you're going to be left with, hold on. So how do I, how do I even test this out? How do I even reproduce this on my end to see how, why, why it's happening? Uh, okay. All right. Thank you for that. That was very informed. Thank you, Christian. I took that debate on. Uh, Cameron, no anything problem. to say about that or shall we move on? Oh, not really. Okay. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Typography, yeah. fluid typography is hard. Yeah. Getting and it perfect so, yeah, for everything. It will be interesting to see how they've implemented this and see how it works. Yeah, when when you see that video and it's obvious, there's a lot of thought been done into making that particular scenario work very very well. Mm. It looks really nice, mm. doesn't it? It's ever so appealing as you shrink it. It just changes a lot of times and it looks perfect in all scenarios, but like you say, trying to accommodate the 4000 different screen resolutions out there. Yeah, a heck of a challenge. Right, so a new beachhead for every, for, so this is where the new YouTube channel courses are going to come out, aren't they? The how to do fluid typography in three years. It stages. makes sense, but the, the use cases are pre, pretty limited. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. It is time to do some back patting. Jessica 
is going to not only wear her Viking helmet, she's going to get a large paddle out and just pat herself on the back. Uh, because Hang on. this, nope. I got, I got, a, I got a flag for this one. She's got a flag now. It's just the best. Uh, can I just tell you a story? Right, this has got nothing to do with WordPress. When I was twenty-one years old, I went to a party in London, and this guy showed up that nobody knew. Like nobody could figure out how he'd got there, and. He was wearing an enormous trench coat and it went from shoulder to the floor. And, and it turned out, like, as the evening went on, turned out this guy had everything inside his coat. Literally everything. He'd sewn custom pockets throughout the entire internals, including behind his back. And it got to the point where I said to him, because it was getting ridiculous. You know, people were saying, have you got a sewing kit? And he'd rummage around it. Yeah, I've got a sewing kit. I said to him, have you got a chicken baster? And he had a, he had a chicken baster. He had a thing to, to baste oil onto a chicken. He had a small chicken baster. And Jess, what I'm feeling is that you have fast become the that guy on this podcast episode. You've got all the things. Look well, at you with I, your array of things in the you background. You know what, though? <laughs> I keep this here because we do a lot of Zoom calls, and some people are killing it, and they need to okay. know that. Okay, that's what it is, killing it. But look, look at Cameron, you know, very minimal. Look at Christian, very minimal. Me, I've got a few bits of paper, but it's very minimal. You, you got all the stuff going on. It's I've got great. stuff all over the place, but you know what? That's just how my brain works. I Jess, know where it all is. Jess, do you have a chicken baster? Not in this room. Oh, it's such a disappointment. But I have Honestly, two I, sizes in another room. I don't know if you can come back. Oh, wait, okay, that's fine. You got them in another room. That's, that's <laughs> fine. Anyway, there's the chicken baster. That is the strong contender for the episode title. Chicken Gosh, baster. I need to go to parties with you, Nathan. Well, honestly, it was so strange. It was literally, we were all wetting ourselves with laughter as people said more and more curious and weird things, and he had them. Uh, it was Sounds very like odd. Anyway, it. right. So. so what yeah, are we looking the, at? What are we looking at, Jess? Well, we were going to talk about this on the last episode. And we ran out of time. Um, and, you know, obviously, Pressable did well here. But the cool thing about Review Signal, this is something that is done every year by a guy named Kevin Ohashi. And he does this um, with zero influence. You do have to pay to participate because um, those hosting companies will pay him for his time. There is no way to get an edge on this. Everyone runs through the same tests. And basically, this is an annual performance test to show you how each host that participates is performing that year. Um, so, for example, right now you're looking at WordPress hosting companies, and these are people who submitted for the under $25 category. Each of those dollar amounts are different um, amounts for each plan. So, you know, plans that are between $51 and $100 and so forth. And yep. different hosts will participate in different levels depending on what plans they want to put in. So obviously the sub 25, there's a bunch of them. Those that performed well have stars next to their name. Those that performed do not. <laughs> um, you'll see that there's obviously highlights in every single area. Um, in this one, there were a lot of heavy hitters for the 25 sub $25. Um, the higher you go, the less you're going to see. Um, obviously, Pressable got stars in every category. Um, but the, the real story here, and this is something that Kevin specifically spoke about. If you look at our best performers from the test last year, and not our like our Pressable, but our like the community. If you look at our top performers from last year, there would be on the lower level this year. Because every host across the board is just killing it now. Huh. Hosts are becoming faster than they've ever been before. And it's really quite amazing to look at year over year. So I don't know if you're the technical type, but if you are, you know, you can look into each of these individual hosts, like click any random one. It doesn't have to be mine. Well, why not? Let's do yours because you're here. Okay. So if we click into but, the you know, one, here we go. You scroll down and you can see kind of how we performed year over year. But if you go further... They'll see the load storm. And this is kind of where Kevin does his real data analysis, um, you know, and he's running load tests. He's using um, specific software to see how the host performs under 
a lot of traffic with a lot of people doing a lot of different processes. Um, and that's kind of where he gives you back these scores. And it's really interesting from a hosting perspective to kind of see where you have room to grow, not only just in comparison to others, but just against what you want to, what you think you should be doing. Um, but it's also just a nice way to kind of celebrate how far you've come. Um, I know there are some hosts that got stars this year that didn't get them last year. And I think that by and large, they'd probably say that they were influenced by the feedback that they got the year before. So when you're out shopping for a host and they tell you they're the fastest, I would encourage you to come to WP Hosting Benchmarks and look at Kevin's data and he'll tell you who really was. Now, that said, different hosts will have different speeds. Obviously, if you have a site with nothing on it, you could be a whole lot faster than a site <laughs> running three sliders. Um, you know, there's always nuance. But generally speaking, I think that Kevin's data is a really good rule of thumb. Um, you'll see there are a lot of hosts that don't participate. And that's a conversation for another day. I have my thoughts on why they probably don't. But um, I think there's a really good array of hosts here. And I think it actually helps further the entire WordPress community by participating because we can all see kind of what's working best for everybody else. Do you know, I, I really, I didn't know that the... First of all, that there was a fee, and I, I can quite understand that there's a fee because he's basically putting a, probably an awful lot of time in, and the, the level of detail that would go into this would be simply unachievable by a voluntary thing. So did you say his name is Kevin? It is. So Kevin, cool gig. You know, what a, what a nice thing to be uh, to be doing. If you're really into the, the data and the nerdiness of it, of inspecting what WordPress hosts are like, it's great that you've... You've managed to forge a, a life for yourself where that's what you're doing. But also, this is the perennial question, isn't it, in Facebook groups and so on, especially with um, people who are dissatisfied with their uh, current host. They just want some one place to give them some kind of an authority. And whilst you say uh, not everybody's here, it's a good place to begin that journey, isn't it? It gives you some key pointers right off the bat. And I would imagine that most people are not really going to delve into the statistics too deeply. But if you are that person and you're looking to make a change, this is a good place to start. So it's um, wphostingbenchmarks.com. Very cool. Yeah, yeah nice. And uh, you, you're happy with the way it turned out for Pressable this year, right? I am. You know, like you said, not everybody's going to go here, but we are really doing our best to reach more developers and agencies. We think we are very well suited for that audience. And I think most agencies and developers do care about their performance. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm very happy to see us perform well in this specifically. Yeah, there must be a little bit of nail biting when Kevin comes back and uh, drops that bomb, drops the Kevin bomb, um, and you don't get the star this year. Uh, but Having well worked done. for a few hosts, yeah, it's it's a little nerve wracking. You're you're refreshing until, <laughs> until the results are posted. Kevin, nice. I like I say, nice gig. That's great. Um, Cameron and um, Christian, I know that time is short, so if you've got nothing to say on that, we'll move on. If if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Let me just quickly nip to this one. We we had the guys on from North Commerce. If you don't know about North Commerce, they're in kind of like beta, maybe still even alpha. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a it's a platform which they're hoping to rival WooCommerce. It's called North Commerce, and I just thought I'd introduce uh, this video. It's on YouTube. It's called North Commerce Update Plugin Security. And if you're curious about changing away from WooCommerce or trying a different e-commerce solution built inside of WordPress, you might be interested to know about some of the bits and pieces that they're doing to ensure that your your transactions are not being inspected as it travels across the wire and, <laughs> and secure. Boy, that was uh, that went right through me. Uh, God bless um, you, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron just did the did the big sneeze. Um, 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 okay, WordCamp US. Uh, they have their speaker lineup available now. If you were lucky enough to get a ticket, then uh, this is an article on WP Tavern, but basically you can now go and see. They released it over a number of rounds. They did like a, a blog post each and every day for like a week or something. And you can go and check it out now um, and see what the schedule is like. And obviously, if you are going, it's from the, I'm going to get the dates wrong. I can't remember. I think it's the 6th to the 9th. Or maybe it's the nine to, to eleven. The 11th, yeah, ninth to the eleventh of September. And uh, if you are going, 
I'll see you there because I'm going now. Um, which is going to be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about it later, but I'm delighted. I did some sort of incredible... Oh my gosh, I'm so happy I, right now. I'll tell you the story when we've finished and I'll tell everybody else the story at some point, but just the weirdest thing. Uh, but I am going to be there, which is really nice. So if you're into uh, attending that WordCamp, the important thing is if you didn't make it, there will be a live stream available. So you'll be able to see the whole entire thing. I wanted to mention that I did a podcast episode this week with Ritis Chevalis from Visual Composer. And whilst he is a employee um, of Visual Composer, it's not particularly about that. It's all about selling to your WordPress clients the fact that you are using a, B a page builder, not as something that you need to be ashamed of, but as something that, in his words, you, you kind of ought to be proud of because it's going to save you a whole bunch of time um, 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 um and cameron was it this one that you wanted me to mention or was it the other one oh, perhaps was it this one yeah you're nodding i think yeah. so right i confess i read this a few days ago and cameron if you're prepared to wing it um tell us what this one's about because i read it and for some reason anything that i read got pushed out of my brain during the weekend, and I can't remember what it's about. It's called New Proposal Calls for Contributors to Stop Merging Experimental APIs from Gutenberg to WordPress Core. What what are the talking points in here? Um, well, in WordPress Core, in 6.0 or whatever the current version is, I can't remember, there are about 300 APIs as part of Gutenberg that are marked as experimental and shouldn't be used. Um, unfortunately, when you put something into core, um, people are going to use it because it's there. Yeah. And <laughs> especially when you have a beta testing plugin called Gutenberg that you should be doing all the experimental API stuff in, um, when you put those experimental APIs in core, when they're not stable, um, by putting them in core, you're almost endorsing them as stable when they're not. And so people use them, things break, and it's not a good time for anyone. So I think it is about time this happened. How I'm obviously not committing to core or anything like that, but is there's no there's no way of sort of expunging these, or they haven't been expunged over time, or they just slip through a net, or how does it how does that even happen? Um, well, they don't really slip through a net because they have to be explicitly copied over from the plugin into core. Um, I don't know exactly how they get in there. Like, obviously, these are all features that probably should be in core at some point, you know, whether it's just implemented in the best way, um, you know, whether it's because the people who are working on 2023 theme are like, hi, I need this feature. Can we make sure it's available so that when people install the theme, they don't need the plugin for it to work. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe it's something like that. I'm I'm not sure. But you know, for if if it was a couple that had come in, we'd say, okay, sure, but three hundred APIs is yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, it does seem like a lot, doesn't it? And presumably then there's no sort of particular security threat here. It's just a quirky, no. a quirky amount of things in there that probably ought to be just in, as you say, the beta testing plugin. Where they where they belong um, until further notice. Unfortunately, time is our enemy today. I've got a hard stop in about ninety seconds, so we are going to have to wrap it up there. There's a couple of articles that we never got to. I'm afraid I might just push those on to next week. But 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 I think we're going to go with the chicken baster title for this particular episode. Um, Christian has joined us purely for this bit. Um, Christian's hands are so ready. He's been like, oh yeah, he's, he's oh, yeah. like, I've been waving them up. Yeah, yeah. Have you, we haven't seen his hands during this no, whole episode. He's been, I, I've getting been them holding ready. them. He's had them in like bowls nice of water to make them look yeah, perfect. Yeah, he's been yeah. moisturizing during the week. Absolutely, <laughs> because it's yeah. that humiliating bit at the end of the show where we 
where we all raise our hands and we wave simultaneously and then we're going to use this as the album. Look, look, Cameron's got a hand missing. He's got a micro. There, there. Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? Okay, and that's it. Look at Christian's hands, the best hands. Just, I think, the, thank yeah. you. Thank you, you for noticing. Well, <laughs> we will... Uh, We'll be back. Thank next, you. I, I say we'll be back next week. I should be back next week if the if the stars align. It should be. I can't remember off the top of my head who's on. But I would like to sincerely thank uh, Cameron for joining us today and staying up by what is now probably close to midnight. I apologise, Cameron. Just midnight. Oh, I don't know how you maintain cogentness at that time of day. I would also like to thank Christian Raber for joining us from WP Chill and also Jess Frick for joining us from Pressable. Thank you so much. Your participation makes it all worthwhile. And thank you for the commentary that's come in this week. I really appreciate you guys as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hit the end stream and I will see you 